This video is about how much money you need to have invested into passive income investments in order to live off of them. Hey guys, I am Mr. Machek, and if you're interested in building financial independence, investing in real estate, and anything money related, then please subscribe below. I would really appreciate it. That's what this channel is all about. So we are gonna be talking about two different ways. One is dividend stocks, and the other one is through real estate. But first, all of this is made possible because of YouTube, so please smash the like button. Not only would I appreciate it, but also YouTube is gonna learn that this is a valuable video. Making passive income might take a little while, but clicking the like button only takes a moment. Watch. That's it. It's done. I feel it's a fair trade. I give you lots of content. You just smash the like button. And since you're here, you probably like free money. So I do have a link down below to Webull. It is a stock trading platform that is all free for you. And you get free stocks if you sign up with my link. So please click sign up and deposit only $100 and then they're gonna give you free stocks. I just got two free stocks myself and it was a total value of $18. You know, the first question you have to ask yourself is how much do you actually need to live off of? Now, everyone is a little bit different. You may come from an affluent family or a middle-class family it doesn't really matter what does matter is that you figure out how much do you need to live now statistics show that the average US household makes sixty three thousand dollars a year so we're just gonna use an easy number sixty thousand dollars for all the calculations that I'm gonna do here and now let's get into dividend stocks so if you are not familiar with what dividend stocks are it's pretty simple basically you're buying some shares of a company and that actually makes you part owner of that company although you don't really get to run anything in that company you just own the shares that's all but then at the end of the year or at the end of the quarter more commonly what happens is that there is a profit usually in these companies and then they have a payout and they reward you one of the shareholders using what's called a dividend yield and all companies out there do not pay dividends so just some of them do so usually they're more established companies that have been around for quite a while and they're usually not in the growth phase of their business they're kind of usually just plateaued level out, at least the ones that pay really well. So it's really simple. You own some shares, you get dividend payouts. And what's really nice is that a lot of these dividend payouts, if you're not gonna be using them right away to live off of them because you have a regular job, then you can actually reinvest them right into buying more of that stock. So that way you grow your portfolio because you're making money on the money you've invested and then you're buying more stocks to make more money. It's wonderful. So I'm gonna actually show you four different examples of companies you may or may not have heard about. You most likely have heard of at least three out of four of these companies. First off is a lot of people's favorite, AT&T. They are very long established and their stock does not grow that much. It's pretty much leveled off, but it, the money is not in the growth of the stock. It's in the dividend yield, the dividend payout. What is it? Take a look, 7.27, unbelievable. Let's look at another one. Apple, wonderful company, and their stock is growing a lot. In fact, if you just look at the history of the stock, you're gonna see that it's continually growing, even from the beginning of this year, 2021, to right now, it has grown significantly. But what is their dividend payout? 0.6%? Yikes, not too good. Now you'll make some money on the stock appreciation, but it's not really the best one to use as a dividend payout strategy. All right, next one here is McDonald's. Check it out. This one actually pays 2.39%. So it's basically getting 2.39% interest on your money. And lastly is NLY. Look up that ticker symbol. They are at a whopping 10.28%. They're actually a real estate trust. So it's a REIT and they do really well. And obviously they pay out their people for it. 10.28%. So to do some number calculations, here's what we do. You figure out how much you want to live off of. In our examples, it's going to be $60,000. And then you divide it by the percentage amount that they pay out. So let's take a look at the first one. AT&T, $60,000 divided by 7.28%. 27% divided by 100 for the percentage, and that equals $825,309,000 that you need to have invested in this stock for it to pay you $60,000 per year. Let's do the same math for Apple. You take $60,000 divided by 0.6% divided by 100, and that equals to $10 million. That is crazy. That's how much you need to have invested into Apple. Now I'll tell you, if you have $10 million and you're gonna invest it into Apple, that 10 million is gonna grow. But the dividend payout, ah, not the best, right? 
But let's take a look at McDonald's. $60,000 divided by 2.39% divided by 100 is $2,510,460. And lastly, NLY, this is the best one, guys. So let's take $60,000 divided by 0.1028 divided by 100 equals $583,657 that you need to have invested. That is incredible. That is such a good return. But let's talk about some of the drawbacks of investing in dividend stocks. So the first drawback I kind of already touched on, and that is that these stocks usually are not high growth stocks. The ones that pay a good dividend, they're not really gonna be growing and the stock price going up, up, and up. Now, that's why Apple, for example, is a technology company that keeps reinvesting a lot of their profits into their company instead of paying out their shareholders. So that one, you're gonna need 10 million, but you're gonna make a lot more money on the actual growth of the stock than you would of the dividend. Another negative of dividend stocks is that they may not actually pay out. So you have an assumption that historically they've been paying out a certain percentage and that that percentage is going to stay the same. And if there's some sort of major slump or something going on with that company, they may actually suspend dividends for a quarter or two quarters or maybe even longer, depending on what's happening. Now, another drawback is that this is all dependent on one thing, the stock market. You're literally carrying all your eggs in one basket if that's your only investment. And if you drop that basket, for example, if we have a big crash, let's just say in the 1930s, let's just say in the late 1990s, let's just say in March 2020, now we did recover from that one, but this could happen and maybe you might lose everything because you might panic sell or whatever. You may not have the time to actually wait for it to all come back. So basically you are not leveraged. You have everything in one place and you know, if it's going great, it's going great. And if it's not, then it's not. Okay, now let's get into the second strategy of making passive income pay you how much you need to live off of it. And that is real estate. And I'm specifically going to be talking about what I have experience in, which are residential rentals. Now, in my examples, I'm gonna use single family homes, but you could also use the same numbers, just basically treat the one unit as one parcel of land, not necessarily one door. So what I love about real estate is that you are able to leverage it. Now, what I mean by that is if you have $50,000 and you know, you're gonna buy some AT&T stock or something, then you have $50,000 of AT&T stock. But if you are buying real estate, you can take this $50,000, make it a 20% down payment on a $250,000 house, a $250,000 asset that you're able to purchase. And yes, you're gonna have a loan on the extra 200,000, but after all of your expenses, after your property manager, your vacancy, your capital expenditures, everything, you are going to be left with at least a 5% return. Now, in my opinion, that is a bad return on investment in real estate, but I'm gonna use a bad example in my examples here because it's been so good to me and there are a lot more benefits than just a cash on cash return that you're getting. So if you are putting in $50,000 into a real estate investment, 5% of that per year would be $2,500 after all expenses. But wait, there's a lot more to it. First of all is the mortgage pay down. This is incredible because every single year on that $200,000 loan, you're probably gonna be paying down another $5,000. So every single year, you're gonna be paying down your loan and that means that you are gaining more assets. Now these are not assets that you can just use. It's not a liquid asset like AT&T stock might be just sell it and you got your money. This is more of a long-term thing, but you do get mortgage pay down. And the second thing is that you have so many tax benefits. So really talk to your accountant or just Google tax advantages of owning rental property in America. And you're gonna see a whole list of things that you can do to take advantage of not paying as many taxes. Also, the money that you're gonna make from it, you can deduct. And I'm not giving you any tax advice here, but talk to your accountant because they're gonna explain it really well because there are so many benefits, I can't even get into it. Also, I'm not an accountant, so legally I can't get into it. And lastly, the biggest benefit of them all is your appreciation. So, you know, if you're 85 and you're getting into real estate investing right now, you may not see the light of day of this appreciation, but if you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, or 50s, you are going to see that appreciation because real estate tends to go up 
year over year and it has slumps and then it goes right back up and beats new record highs. Kind of like Bitcoin nowadays. And an interesting stat is that over 90% of America's self-made millionaires did it with real estate and most of that is actually through the appreciation part because they hold on to it for a long time. That's what I do. I like to hold on to my real estate investment portfolio for as long as I possibly can or as long as it makes sense. So now let's backtrack to the original question is how much money do you need to have invested to make passive income? And let's take our $60,000 divided by $2,500 a year. We're not going to take into account all the tax deductions, the appreciation or any other benefit of real estate. And you end up needing to buy 24 single family homes. So now let's go a little deeper. 24 single family homes times $50,000 down payment on each one. And you need $1,200,000. Now, depending on which area you actually purchase in, these are pretty decent homes. At least in our area, $250,000 buys you a nice middle class home where you're going to get a good tenant and you, hopefully they're going to stay there a very long time. They're not going to trash it and you're not going to have too many headaches. If you want to be more aggressive in your investment, then you can buy lower income homes and those ones are going to yield a 10 to 15% year on year return. So what does that mean? That basically means at 10% you're going to need $800,000 and at 15% you're only going to need $400,000 to invest. But let me warn you, I have a lot of experience in this. These are kind of a pain in the neck. That's all I'm going to say. So let's talk about some of the drawbacks of real estate. First of all, if you want to find a really good deal, you're going to have to do the work. That's what my experience is. Agents are just out there to sell something and make a commission for the most part. So you're going to need to actually research and figure out where do you want to invest into, what kind of properties, and where can you find an investment that's going to pay you at least 5% year on year after all expenses. If you want a really good spreadsheet, go to biggerpockets.com and search some of the resources that they have there. There are so many things that they teach about and this is one of the things is investing in real estate, residential, single family rentals. But you know, back to it, if you are willing to put in the work, then all the tax advantages and appreciation and the cash on cash return is going to be really worthwhile. But if you're not willing to do any work, go back to plan A, buy some dividend stocks because you don't need to do anything. If you have a full-time job or more than full-time job working 70 hours a week, you're not going to have time to start looking at real estate. So just put it into the stock market, into high paying dividend yield stocks and just take the money. So let me know, do you currently invest into dividend stocks or do you invest into real estate? I'd really like to know what is your experience. Just drop a comment below. Please let me know. I will reply to you. Also right now, please check out this video right here if you do want to get started into real estate investing and check out this video here about my options trading challenge. It's not dividend stock investing, but it's another way that at this point in time, I have made unbelievable returns.